It was a usual sunny day at Hilo International Airport in Hawaii as Aloha Airlines Flight 243 was being prepared for takeoff. This flight included a Boeing 737, and it was scheduled to fly from Hilo International Airport to Honolulu. The flight was only 35 minutes long, meaning that due to such short flights, the airline had a lot of the same flights throughout the day. On this particular day, April 28, 1988, this plane had been going back and forth between the islands of Hawaii since early morning. At 1 p.m., this plane would make its ninth flight of the day. As the passengers start boarding the plane, the crew already know their routine and are welcoming the passengers to their seats. In the cockpit, pilot Bob Schornsteimer, who's an experienced pilot with 8,500 flight hours and over 11 years of experience, is the captain of this plane, and alongside him, the first officer was Mimi Tompkins, who also has quite the experience with flying the Boeing 737. Not only were the pilots on this plane experienced, so was the entire crew on the plane. In fact, this was probably one of the most experienced crews you'll find. This airplane had been flying back and forth between the islands of Hawaii for 19 years and held the record of 89,000 flights, and today only one other Boeing 737 beats that record. The plane finally takes off at 1.25 p.m. Most of the flight time is spent in climbing to their cruising altitude, which takes 20 minutes so they can reach 24,000 feet. Because of that, the flight attendants start handing out beverages and snacks to the passengers while the plane is still climbing. Although they are able to move around, the passengers are still required to wear their seatbelt. After 20 minutes, the time is 1.45 p.m., and the plane is finally at cruising height. With the perfect flying weather, everything is going according to plan. Or at least they thought so. After they made a smooth takeoff and made their way to cruising height, everything seemed to go according to plan. But around 1.48, the unexpected happened. All of a sudden, a huge blast occurred and an explosive decompression has torn away a large section of the roof right behind the cockpit to the four-wing area. This area was about 18 and a half feet long, and it left the passengers screaming and praying for their lives. Wind was blowing from everywhere, and the only thing keeping the passengers in their seats were their seatbelts. The pilot looked back to see what had happened, and the only thing he saw was the blue sky where the first-class ceiling had been. The pilot immediately took control over the plane, deployed the brakes, and began to drop the plane down to 322 to 334 miles per hour, with a rate as high as 4,100 feet per minute. At the height of 24,000 feet above ground, the pilot knew that these people could not survive the wind and the cold air that high in the clouds. The lack of roof that is torn from the plane took away the emergency oxygen supply and now the cabin is left depressurized and without any oxygen. The pilot immediately takes it upon himself to lower the plane to an altitude where passengers can safely breathe and searches for a place where he can make an emergency landing. As the plane was quickly lowering down, the passengers faced another issue. They couldn't get a view in the cockpit or whether or not there was a pilot on the plane. This caused more panic and shock and it left the passengers thinking this might be their last day on Earth. However, what they didn't know is that the pilot was giving all he had to be able to safely land the plane in the fastest possible way. But as he was lowering the plane, the nose began to tilt down by around three feet, and now the plane is being held down by just the narrow floor beams. The nearest place where the plane could land was the island of Maui, so that's where they were headed. The Kahului Airport is located between two volcanic mountains, and it takes precision to get to the airport. However, this plane had no other option and decided that the best way to make it on the ground safely was to land at this airport. As the plane goes down, Mimi Tompkins tries to reach Honolulu air traffic control but can't get through. So she decides to connect to the frequency for the tower at Maui's Kahului Airport. Three minutes after the explosion, the crew managed to make their first voice contact with the ground. They explained the situation and requested an emergency landing. Only five minutes away from the runway, the pilot starts slowing down the plane and slowly turning it towards the runway. At that point, the passengers sense that the pilots are still there and in control of the plane. After getting to a lower altitude, the crew and passengers can easily breathe. As the plane was slowly reaching the runway, the pilot slowed down the plane even further, but he saw that anything under 195 miles per hour caused the plane to lose control. So in the moment, he decided that he would maintain that speed for the approach at the runway. 
The crew lowered down the landing gear, but was shocked when the nose gear didn't light up. At this point, if the nose gear of the plane wasn't down, it would be really damaging for the plane because as soon as this plane landed in the condition it was in, the lack of nose gear would make the plane break in half. They contacted the Kahului Airport again and asked them to get visuals on their nose gear. After they heard the affirmative that their nose gear was down, they went for the runway. At the last few seconds before hitting the runway, the pilots have to make a life or death decision that they hadn't been prepared for. The plane successfully landed at Kahului Airport at 1.58 p.m., a little over 10 minutes after the disaster happened. After the plane has landed, an emergency evacuation of the passengers and crew has begun. 65 passengers were reported to be injured from the incident and seven of them with serious injuries. But how have all the passengers managed to survive? Well, as we said earlier, at the moment of decompression, it was their seat belts that kept the passengers from being sucked out from the plane. Although this was a disaster that could have resulted really badly, at the end of the day, it's a true miracle how this plane managed to land without having a lot of injuries or something even worse. However, the chief flight attendant, Clarabelle Ho Lansing, known as CB, was standing in row five when the incident happened. It has been reported that due to the incident, CB has been thrown out of the plane and fell into the ocean. They spent three days searching the ocean for her body. Sadly, it was never recovered. At the end of the day, the main question that people had was how this plane landed with such huge damage. Investigators around the world still ask themselves, how can one plane suffer such damage and not break in half? The only thing that was keeping the cockpit connected to the rest of the plane were the floor beams. So was this landing truly a miracle? Before we decide if it was a miracle or not, we have to understand the reason why this incident happened. Not only have investigators looked at the cause of the incident, but they've also investigated how this plane stayed in one piece. If you take a look at the location of the explosion, which was at the top of the airplane, the four beams kept holding the plane straight and in line no matter how much the nose was tilted to the ground. However, if the damage was at the bottom and the nose was trying to bend to the ground, it would have been much easier for the plane to break at the roof and end up in half. After the incident occurred, a passenger reported that when she was boarding the plane, she noticed a fuselage crack. However, she decided not to report this, thinking it's not a huge deal. The primary cause of the damage of the plane was a total separation and loss of a major portion of the upper crown skin and other fuselage structure. This particular airplane was made in May 1969 and was set for a 20-year service life and 75,000 flights. This plane has exceeded that number, and even though many of the flights were short, the fuselage was under a lot of stress. You might ask, don't they check the plane routinely? Well, they do. However, all of these fuselage examinations are done at night and under artificial light. The workers have missed the tiny cracks and they go unrepaired. These cracks make the airplane a ticking time bomb. The aircraft was damaged beyond repair and ended up being dismantled on site. After an investigation by the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board, they concluded that the incident was caused by metal fatigue exacerbated by crevice corrosion. At the end of the investigation, the NTSB concluded their final report saying that the reason for the incident was the failure of the Aloha Airlines maintenance program to detect any potential damage that would further result in a huge disaster. Bye for now.